Welcome back, everybody, to Trade Talk. I'm your host, Nico. This is episode 17. Uh, very quickly, just wanted to mention that we are part of the uh, Late Night Chat Network, which is basically all the podcasts that we do on this SoundCloud page that you may be listening to this podcast on. And basically, we also do another show called Weekly Wine Comic Time, which I do with my girlfriend, Christine, where we talk about the weekly single issue uh, new release comics that come out every week and we kind of give you a little bit review of a review and rundown of those as well as the late night chat podcast that I do uh, with JT that's late night chat with JT and Nico basically that's uh, another podcast I do with my buddy and um, uh, we basically just talk about everything anything and everything under the sun we kind of just you know shoot the shit and talk about current events and things that in, uh, are of uh, interest to us as well as have friends of ours come on as well so yeah so that's basically all the shows that we currently do uh at this point in time we hope to add more content in the future to the channel uh, as well as um you know if there is anybody who's listening that thinks they can uh add something of interest to the uh channel as well please let me know if you know me personally feel free to reach out um we're always looking for new content to put up on there all right so without further ado let's get right into it here this is uh i got three different books i wanted to talk to you guys about today all right, first up, we got uh, The Wild Storm. This is volume four. This is by DC Comics, uh, written by uh, Warren Ellis, of course, and with art by, uh, what is this guy's name again? John Davis Hunt. Yes, I actually just talked about his art when I talked about um, Clean Room on our episode last week, which I didn't lo- end up loving, but I thought his art was really great, and I had remembered that he is the artist on Wild Storm, which is, I think, where I originally seen his work um clean room since clean room was new to me and uh yeah he's really good really good fit for warren ellis i thought that he did a great job on this wild storm book um this is the fourth and final volume of this series it collects issues 19 to 24 uh yeah and retail 16.99 uh u.s price for this trade paperback uh, so I've been reading this in trade. Uh, it's been coming out like the last couple of years. I think it almost came out on a monthly schedule. He may have taken a couple of breaks during this time, which is pretty good for Warren Ellis. I mean, sure, I'm sure the artist needed some time to catch up as well. Uh, but, you know, it's good that he saw this through because when they announced this book, along with like uh, uh, Michael Cray, which was another title, which I think I talked about in one of the earlier episodes of this show possibly um that another writer was writing as well as like apparently i think there was supposed to be more i don't know if we're still going to see that but it was like part of like a multi-year kind of plan that he had of bringing warren ellis back to reimagine these characters and that was actually the most impressive thing about this series was uh, warren ellis has already played around with a lot of these characters and actually you know um a lot of people say was like part of the reason why like superheroes became good again coming out of the 90s right was because of warren ellis because you know he did Stormwatch, and then he did um he did a uh a very famous run on the authority and with brian hitch at the time and uh planetary of course which is my favorite of all those things that he's he worked on in the wild storm universe you know and then when they kind of started that jim lee you know they 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 will have their relationship when he kind of started, started that whole wild storm part of the universe, you know, coming out of Wildcats and this kind of stuff that he brought over there uh, to DC after, like, he left Image, I guess. Um, they kind of signed on Warren, and he basically just had, like, the, a crazy new vision and approach to superhero comics that was just different at the time, right? And, and basically, it's where he kind of, you know... Uh, made a name for himself slowly off of things like that and uh and you know from there on was you know warren ellis i mean when he got brought over here uh so like from i guess like the you know the brit brit invasion of writers and talented artists and stuff that came you know in the late 80s early 90s so yeah so i've i really enjoy all those things that he did but this new reimagining of it that was what was so impressive about it, is that he's basically come back years and years later and actually just took a whole different approach it's not like it was him kind of taking uh, picking up where he left off this is like a whole different story and reimagining of, of the characters he's already kind of created and or um 
uh, wrote like was the first one to like uh like he like is best well known for writing so uh, in this fall final volume i will say throughout all of them since i didn't talk about all the volumes here on this show um uh, basically the group of people that come together are in between are in the middle of a war between two big like almost like government agencies let's say it's easiest to describe it as like io and skywatch which I guess maybe he's calling Stormwatch Skywatch in this. I was never 100% on that. I think that there was some reference to Stormwatch and characters from that as well as um, uh, Wildcats. Like they were referred to uh, a Wildcat as being like an actual machine or something in this, I believe. Like there was there was some just some references to things from that universe as opposed to seeing all the characters from that. Like and but basically this final volume was like a a combined effort of of uh, ca- uh characters from Planetary, mostly, you know, Jenny Sparks and basically the rest of the authority. Uh which she, you know, she was also a part of, I believe, at one point and and um yeah, so like all of Authority, like basically Midnighters in this one um apollo and uh jack hawksmore which we actually previously saw in the story in the series but i think this was the first time we kind of saw midnighter and apollo at least in full force like this within the series so yeah it was just basically a reunion of all these characters it seemed like they were kind of all coming together from different sides having different allegiances that these different agencies of some sort or you know being caught up in the middle of this not really having picked a side but coming to, to terms with each other and the agreement that they're going to basically get in the middle of this and take down and, and of this war that these two people are waging war on and save the innocents that are going to be affected basically the human race as a result of all this so they basically just got in the middle of it and ended up taking them down and and uh you know without to get into all the other kind of um plot lines that were running throughout this i thought it was a very satisfying conclusion so um, so yeah, hats off to this. I mean, there's a quote here on the actual trade paperback that was from the Nerdist that said, well, Wildstorm is quite possibly Ellis's best work within a superhero universe. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue that. I mean, I, like, like I said, what it was most impressive is that he's already worked inside this superhero universe, but yet he's come back years later and kind of t- took a different approach and take on it with some of the familiar faces. We know him, uh, uh, as of writing before. And basically reimagining his own smart ideas so like that's a that's a very interesting thing you don't see many people do that so um i just thought yeah it was well written well paced uh great dialogue there was of course some funny joke within this like weird offbeat warren ellis kind of joke where basically all the characters in here for some reason had an orgy at one point in this book <laughs> and then, then apollo and midnighter show up later on and they and they like they they basically put all this information in their in their brain so they can like give, give them the sense of everything that they've kind of gone through so far and for them to understand that they're all on the same side like i guess one of the psychic characters kind of with that ability did that to uh apollo and he was just like <laughs> He's just like, wait a second, you guys had a big orgy. <laughs> like, they're like, all that stuff, and that's the first thing you say? And he's like, well, listen, you know, we can't really help out in that regard because, you know, <laughs> we're gay and all. So, because Apollo and Midnight are gay characters, and it's like, yeah, we're not really fond of vaginas, so I don't know how much help we'd be. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was a funny joke that stuck out to me th- throughout this uh, volume. It's just that the fact that it was like an ongoing joke of them having some sort of orgy she don't really see but then like jenny sparks mentions that she met a bunch of people and oh yeah they're just all sleeping in my room right now and like everyone's basically in the same bed together <laughs> so it was just the, it was a weird weird thing and Warren Ellis does has a weird sense of humor and he kind of does things like that to throw the reader off because you got all this interesting kind of smart stuff happening uh, in his book but then meanwhile off to the side you got some like absurdist kind of moment that <laughs> that you're just like what <laughs> so so that's why I, I like Warren Ellis for that kind of reason anyways uh yeah really enjoyed that book if you guys have never checked that out you don't really need to have read the previous Wildstorm stuff he did but I certainly would suggest that you do just because um it's great any of these planetary stuff authority stuff from back in the day like the i guess the 2000s or whatever late late 90s early 2000s uh it's worth checking out in my opinion 
Uh, but this new uh, four volume series, I guess, uh, all said and done, this Wildstorm series, uh, you know, check this out as well. Like I said, if you just want to kind of get a flavor of what he's been kind of up to lately, uh, instead of going back and looking for throughout his older work, it's it's really good. I think it stands on its own. And uh, like I said, you don't really need to know the characters because he's basically re reinvented them all in this for this. So he, it's not him picking up on old threads from old series, old series. So, all right. Next up, we got American Carnage, which is an actually, uh, I guess, one of the last DC Vertigo books that came out, I guess, in their last wave of books where they were trying to make one final push before uh, closing the doors on uh, Vertigo, according to DC, even though there is still Vertigo is still alive and 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 uh, and strong, just it's just with a bunch of different names. Now that they've changed all these new labels, DC Black Label, the Joe Hill Horror House, or whatever the hell it's called, that the Horror Label, and you got the you got the DC Sandman Universe Label, like the Neil Gaiman kind of one. So like, there's still a lot of Vertigo esque type titles and mature titles going throughout DC, but now they've just felt the need to rebrand everything. So. You know who the hell knows? I mean, they may have closed close the doors on the name Vertigo and then revisit it from five years from now when they reboot everything. You know, you know DC. So, anyways, um, but this was like part of the last slew of, of titles. I guess they announced, and some only some that they launched prior to announcing that Vertigo was ending was this American Carnage series. It's written by Brian Hill, art by Leandro Fernandez, uh, colors by Dean White. Just a great team all throughout. I mean, Brian Hill over the last few years has been really making a, a name for himself in comics. And uh, he actually is the one who wrote the Michael Cray series I was talking about earlier with the uh, – that um, launched uh, – opposed to the Wildstorm uh, that uh, that um, Warren Ellis did. Um, and yeah, so uh, this was pretty good. This was a nine-issue series. This collects all nine issues of the title – um, you know, it's a little bit of an uncomfortable read because it has to deal with a little bit to do with politics currently in the, in the States and as well as like racism, you know, uh, that, that still exists. And, but at its core, it's kind of like, I mean, if you've read like something like Scalped by Jason Aaron from Vertigo, I think you would really enjoy this because it has a lot of the same kind of ideas and, and tones in the sense that, um, like scalp like uh the guy goes undercover back to like the reserve like where he kind of grew up and now he's like an undercover cop whereas this one is about a guy who who is mixed white and black but he looks more like a white guy but he has black in him and he basically goes to infiltrate like these dirty politicians who are basically behind closed doors running like almost like the like KKK type, you know, like uh, like faction of some sort, like basically these guys who were just like white supremacist people, right? Like so, like Nazis almost like so. So he, I guess, fell out of the force because some shit went down. He still has a relationship with this with this cop, a black woman cop who comes to him for help. And, and then throughout this, I guess they still, because of their history, whatever, they ended up, up, ended up sleeping together again at some point throughout this. And anyways, they have a relationship and he was kind of begrudgingly, he wasn't ready to like kind of really get ba back into it. Like he is, he, he got thrown off out of the FBI and now like they're coming to him for help because she knows personally, like she went outside of like the, her orders to basically say to him, listen, you need to get this done. You need to get them to like you. You need to let them to let you in because, you know, I know these guys are dirty and then this way I can kind of like, have a man on the inside and, you know, and he, and then uh, meanwhile he's like yeah well you know you, you you know that I'm the only black guy that'll do this but of course he didn't use the word black guy he's used you know the racial slur for black men or not I'm sorry black people for that matter and and yeah so you know Brian Hill is also a black man I should say that wrote this so um, you know I'm sure a lot of this stuff you know hit close to home because he's actually writing some of the other side of of things as well and also you know just uh, the like even like the the dirty racist in this too <laughs> like so anyways and yeah the majority of the story is about him kind of getting close to them um the politician's daughter basically finds out that uh, he wants to run for president he's like i think a um a governor at this point with aspirations to become a president one day so 
Uh, he's basically, he makes uh, friendly with his daughter who runs, like, I guess the legal side of things um, and, like, of his campaign and, and a bunch of other organizations, like uh, organizations about, like, you know, taking gangbangers and basically, you know, giving them, putting them on the right path and this kind of thing. So this guy, as a result, he he kind of... He gets close to her and acts like he's like a thug and all this kind of stuff and and uh, and meanwhile like then she 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 uh, does her research on him and learns that he is black and basically she's already kind of tried to bring him into the fray of all these people that like hate black people these like white supremacists that work for her father behind closed doors it's not very public but then as a result of him being more involved he's trying to get closer to her and 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 him and take him down from the inside but she has dirt on him and she doesn't really she he learns she doesn't really agree with everything that her father agrees with but she kind of still supports him and st sticks by him throughout all this shit so she's just as guilty as anybody else and you know it's one of those things where she he gives her the opportunity to kind of get away but you, you know they get um, they get too deep into things and you know shit goes down between him uh the cop that brought him in there the governor that he's going to take down and the daughter and you know shit all comes to a head and it's kind of a very bloody kind of finish to this where you know not everything gets resolved but some things get resolved for the better at least or you know but the but the one thing I will say is that I think this series was originally supposed to continue as an ongoing. Now, I don't know if the end of Vertigo stopped this or if it was because the sales didn't warrant it to be enough or even – I may have also heard that Brian Hill had a, a plans for um, making it longer, but then maybe the material was too close to home for him for maybe some of the things that are currently going on in America. So I, I don't know – a hundred percent if it was just a combination of things but i did hear an interview where i think he had spoken about you know that as well and i just don't know if 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 if, if what definitively made this series stop but you could tell that it was almost like a quicker wrap up than had they had planned because there was a lot of stuff that they were setting up along the way throughout this book that i don't think they were able to explore um further if that makes any sense. So while it was good and it was a really well written story and Leandro Fernandez, I love his art. Dean White great looked great on colors. I mean, I'm a big fan of Leandro Fernandez. Um, I mean the last thing I think he did was that old guard book that I saw him on that Greg Rucka did. And I know they'll be revisiting that because I think now it's like he only did a one arc and he left and then and then now I think there's talks of doing a movie or a show or something behind it. So I think they're gonna come back, revisit the book I heard. Um and if he's going to be the same artist on it, that's good for him. Uh, but yeah, it, it was it was good. I, I think it's definitely it fits in that Vertigo crime vein. Like if you like a lot of crime Vertigo books, um, this is definitely worth checking out. And uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, American Carnage is just the one trade paperback. Um, yeah, my only like I said, the only disappointment is that I think there could have been room for more there, and that it wrapped up very quickly. But that is that could be because of the nature of the comic book business where they're like listen you know you need to cancel this series whether or not they want to continue or sales or whatever many excuses or reasons as to why they they stopped it um you know it just couldn't didn't come to fruition and didn't go full circle and uh, and i just think it could have been a, a whole hell of a lot of a bigger story and uh and uh and the, but the end was fine i think he did a good serviceable job for the ending it's just um i expected a lot more there was a lot of setup for interesting avenues and characters that they were setting up that they could have went to uh went down but they didn't they weren't able to as a result of ending the series so oh well but uh still um very worth checking out and very good book um yeah just so good i kind of wanted more <laughs> all right and last but not least we got shipwreck uh, this is another Warren Ellis book. This is written by Warren Ellis, art by Phil Hester. This comes out of Aftershock Comics. And I don't know if I've talked about an Aftershock book on the show here before. Um, I don't read many of them. There are some interesting creators over there uh, that do uh, good books that I do check out, depending on like the creative team. It's more so like that for me. Like I'll pick up the trade of something that I've heard. Uh, just to quickly mention if I've ever talked about it on the show before because I wanted to give a shout out to Aftershock in general because I don't I like I said I don't think I've talked about any other books other ones I've read that I've really enjoyed are uh, 
Baby Teeth by Donny Cates. And Garth Ennis did a book called Jimmy's Bastard. Oh, what the hell am I talking about? Garth Ennis. Yeah, I just talked about Walk Through Hell um, the other last couple weeks too. Yeah, so there you go. So I have talked about Aftershock on the show before. Um, yeah, that one, I again, I, I, I thought it was good. It was decent, but I didn't end up loving it. This book, on the other hand, I did absolutely uh enjoy and uh like warren ellis again like another creator i would definitely check out a, a book of his no matter what publisher he's at um so shipwreck it's this came out quite a while ago actually probably like a year or two ago his trade probably came out and just i was really late to the party and and checking this one out um phil hester um i've enjoyed his work on a numerous amount of things over the years he's been he's been doing comics for like i don't know like 20 30 years like he's a he's an artist who's who's done a lot some of you might know his work from i guess he did a popular run on green arrow with kevin smith when he wrote the book and and then also with um um, the guy who took over for Kevin Smith after he left it, he remained as the artist on that. He did some Swamp Thing stuff back in the day. He's going to be actually um, drawing the new Jeff Lemire book, Family Tree, which is going to be coming out in a week or two from Image Comics this month. So that I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, but yeah, this is really good. This is about a doctor, Dr. Shipwright is his name, who basically gets stranded. Uh, and, and it's one of those things where the first issue or two of this six issue mini series is like the whole series in this trade paperback. You don't really know what's going on. It's not very clear. Um, he's kind of just wandering through this wasteland. And I thought that it was uh, purgatory uh, because he talks about being stranded there. Uh, hence the name Shipwreck. Uh, he basically got stranded there. Uh, we don't know how at first. He's encountering weird occurrences and, and weird things th like th while he's walking through this like wasteland and, and uh, weird people and uh, nothing is really making sense and you're kind of getting like you're not really getting much of the backstory at first so like you just kind of got to go along with it and be like okay you know where are we going with this and 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 warren ellis is definitely somebody i trust to kind of bring us back around and and uh you know stick the landing and and he and he so did in this this was great this is probably my favorite thing i'm talking about tonight um actually i just ended up finishing it today before recording um it was great um basically you find out it's something else. That's all I'll say because if I tell you this, it kind of will spoil it for anybody who's interested in checking this book out. Um, so, um, like I said, guy who gets stranded. He's a doctor. He was involved in something. He he. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, just trying not to say. Uh, you think he's in purgatory or somewhere in between another time and place or land, and he's w walking through this wasteland. You you have the wonderful art of Phil Hester very uh you know angular and jagged kind of looking art very unique weird looking art that kind of complements the world and his surroundings of like as he's coming across all these weird occurrences and people and 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 things that are happening to him and as you go each issue i'd say probably about halfway through the six issue series it kind of you're like oh okay so now i know what where he is and then after that you're like oh okay and like the next issue goes by okay now i know where he came from like and, and what he was trying to accomplish and and it, there's just these layers that unfold issue to issue you get a little bit more answers and a little bit more and a little bit more and, and it just played out beautifully and it was wonderfully paced and for somebody that like me who gets annoyed when they don't give you enough answers and you you kind of just spend way too much time fucking not knowing what's happening and I, I always require a little something to keep me going this was just i mean you know it is only a six issue mini but i think even even so it was pay, it's not like you waited five issues and you got everything in one final issue at the end where it kind of was revealed to you and by that time you're bored or over it over the idea no this kind of just built um every every single issue um moving into that last one with a very very satisfying conclusion so yeah, definitely check this out. And I, like I said, I would gush about it more. But with to, in doing so, I would have to completely reveal what is going on in this book. And I think you're the more the better for it, not knowing what is happening exactly going into this. Just trust me, the experience is worth it. It's one volume of a book. It's Warren Ellis, who's a fantastic writer. The art is great. Phil Hester on art. 
Uh, so definitely, definitely worth checking out. I can't uh, can't say that enough. It was a really good, enjoyable read for me, and it was really unexpected and, and great. Um, and I had heard so many good things about it up to this point from other people that I was like, okay, I finally got to I gotta check this out. I don't know why I didn't pick it up initially, but but yeah, there you have it. Shipwreck by Warren Ellis, or by Phil Hester through Aftershock Comics. All right, so that'll be it for today, guys. I'll see you guys next week, and thank you for tuning in. Thanks, guys.